Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How is everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another watcher. This one is titled, The Toxic, Toxic Blobs That Rain Down on Washington. Mystery Files. I'm excited to get into this story. Hopefully, you guys are excited as I am. And if you are, go ahead. Turn them lights down low. Put on something comfy cup with something special. Let's get mysterious. A mysterious blob-like substance falls on an entire town. No! What are you doing? Welcome to Mystery Files, where we take a deep dive into cases that span from the creepy to the truly bizarre and everything in between. I'm Ryan. And Is it just me or anytime they start a new season of anything, it gets weird. <laughs> It just starts getting so weird. Today, I'll be forcing my colleague Shane to hear all about the unnerving Oakville Blobs. And in the end, you'll have to decide whether the case is solved or if it's simply a mystery. Hmm. I've never heard of Oakville Blobs. I'm intrigued. I hope it's a mystery. But I imagine a lot of things that fall from the sky can be pretty well figured out what it is. Like, wasn't there like concrete that fell out of the sky someplace and... I might be dumb. But didn't like some people try to do experiments back in the day to make it rain and they put like... Concrete or something in the clouds and it would rain concrete or some shit? And... Then another place like it rained like fish and frogs and shit because the stuff got sucked up into the air during the evaporation process. I th am I? I think I'm dumb. I really think I'm dumb. I think I just hear things places, and then I make up stories in my head to make it sound good. I might be wrong. I might be right though. And if I am, if I am, leave it in the comments down below. I would really like it to be public. Bill Blobs, you ever heard about these bad boys? No. I'm gonna make a blob noises. Is that what you were doing? That's a pretty good impression of a dog licking water out of a bowl. If Wait, I do you want to hear that? Yeah. I think I can do that. Your other impression. Well, that was too much, yes. Yeah, Your other impression sounded better, and frankly, <laughs> it didn't look like what that looked like, and also what that sounded like. All right, let's go take a look at this video. You got a little video for us? Yeah. Wanna check out my video? I wanna check out your video. Let's see the video. Hello, I'm Professor Morris Ashley, and after a much needed hiatus during which I absconded to Italy and enjoyed a serene life of anonymity as a blonde hot air balloon pilot, I'm back thanks to today's sponsor, Incogni. I can finally return to the spotlight. After the success of my hit show, Extreme Science, the fandom got out of hand. My inbox was full of junk, obsessive fan mail was clogging up my mailbox, and my phone was ringing off the hook. I became a virtual shut-in. I tore up my social security card, melted my fingerprints off on one of those men in black machines, and I left my old life behind. What you know, fuck? every day without our knowledge, our personal information is in danger. It's packaged and sold on an open market by hundreds of data brokers. It's really difficult and tedious to unsubscribe from everything ourselves, so the logical solution was to sign up for Incogni. I signed up for an account. I gave them my permission to reach out to data brokers on my behalf and ask them to have my personal data removed. My yearly subscription monitors it for me, protecting my data privacy, keeping my information offline, and making me feel safe. Rap break! I was lonely and adrift because Grift has got my information. Incogni came along at last and proved to be salvation. No more calls, no more data brokers, no more spam. An automated second lease on life. And I'm like, damn. Yes, thanks to Incogni, I can finally be myself again. I'm moving back to Tinseltown. I've had a lovely time in Italy and I will miss my Italian wife, Bianca Sofia. <laughs> Use the code WATCHER to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan at incogni.com slash watcher. Now, back to your regular program. Oh God. Wow, that was a great video, huh? Yeah. I have nothing else to say about that. Well then in that case, let's begin. The tiny Pacific Northwest town of Oakville, Washington lies squarely in the middle of nowhere, surrounded on all sides by forest. 
In 1994, the town had a population of just 665 residents, which is really? fewer people than there were in my high school graduating class. Oh, cool. And those 665 people became the victims of a mysterious incident in which tiny, translucent, gelatinous blobs fell from the sky, possibly resulting in severe illness throughout the town. Oakville averages over 50 inches of rain a year, but on August 7th, 1994, a different sort of rain fell. Chubby rain. I knew it. I <laughs> knew it. The rain was different that day. Chubby rain. Uh, that's from Bowfinger. Tell him the title. Ah. Chubby rain. What? Chubby rain. Stop watching this episode and go watch Bowfinger. Should we right. just take a quick... 90 minute break here yeah and allow them to watch the film and we'll be here when you get back we'll be in the basement 90 minutes starting now i've watched it bro around 3 a.m residents reported that see-through blobs about half the size of a grain of rice were falling from the sky in a 1997 unsolved mysteries episode covering the case local oakville officer david lacy described his experience with the blobs by saying quote it looked like hail laying on top of the wood box and everywhere else. So I just went over and I touched it and it wasn't hail. It was a gelatinous like material. Now, I do want to caution that that is not the blobs. We can see that that is way bigger than a grain of That's rice. That's big, big, big. But what in fact would a blob actually feel like? Are you allowed to go over there? I'm, I'm pontificating here. Did you bring blobs? I did bring blobs. Yes! Uh... And I did bring them right here. <laughs> I don't care for that. <laughs> Where did you get? Where? Come on, man. Yeah! What did it feel like? It it feels like um like goo. Are these just those crystals that absorb water? <laughs> no, I harvested those from uh from Oakville, and I brought them. <laughs> over the next three weeks, six different incidents of the falling blobs were reported. I don't over care for that. Square mile area, Jeez. accompanied by. A reported spike in hospital visits. I see you widening up. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm actually just squeezing. No, I'm not gonna, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not gonna do anything crazy. What do you think? I'm gonna go over there and pull your finger? Um, no. Just I want you to feel the joy of the blobs. I'm I not doing feel, anything funny. I could feel the joy of the blobs. Trust from here. me. I could, no, no, no. no. Come here. Yeah, nothing makes me want to trust you more than you come saying here. trust me. I'm staying right here. Well, then I'll come. To no. You. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so afraid? All right, now you're gonna sit down there. Now bless you. Okay. Well, I didn't want to do anything nasty, but now I do. We're going to continue the lesson. <laughs> this is the part where you sit down. That's I what's going to happen I'm not now. paying attention. You, you, you've done, you've done fucked him all up. He, he's, he's acting out now. We know, we, we already know how it's going to go. You're going to have to listen. Now. I'm not paying attention. All right, to it's time for you to listen now. Bless you. Okay. You know what? I'm not even scared because I don't think you could hit me from there. I don't think, I don't think you have the, the skill. No, okay. Over the next three weeks, six different incidents of the falling blobs were reported over a 20 square mile area, accompanied by a reported spike in hospital visits. The town at large experienced flu-like symptoms as well. <laughs> <laughs> the town at large experienced flu-like symptoms as well as inner ear and respiratory issues. One resident said, "Quote: Everybody that lived here got sick." End quote. While another explained, oh, "Everybody fuck. in the whole town came down with like a flu." Only, it was a really hard flu. It didn't last like seven days. It lasted like seven weeks, or two oh, or three months, end quote. Officer Lacey recalled being violently sick with respiratory issues. Dottie Hearn, who touched the blobs, was another one of those who fell ill. Dottie collapsed the same day those first blobs fell, and was even hospitalized. Did it leave lasting effects on him? Like, is this something that just continued to happen to him? Or was it, you know, we go to the hospital, we're getting better, we don't have to worry about no more? For three days with difficulty breathing, an ear infection, dizziness, and nausea. She said, I started feeling dizzy and everything started moving around and around. That's what she said. Her daughter, okay. Sunny Barcliff, who also experienced nausea and fatigue, shared of her mom's experience. Quote, she was cold, drenched with perspiration. Dottie Pale. was drenched. My mom had been vomiting. She had extreme vertigo. Vision was blurry. For some reason, as we were going out the door, I remembered the substance and wondered if perhaps it might have had some sort of effect on her. End quote. 
However, Dr. David Little, the physician who treated Dottie, stated that he did not believe her symptoms were linked to the mysterious blobs, believing they were due to an inner ear issue. Could be. I, I hate to say this, doctor sounds like a quack. <sighs> a mysterious blob-like substance falls on an entire town, the entire town gets sick, this guy tells this old lady, I think it's an ear infection. I mean, yeah. I don't think Dottie would lie. Did, what, did Dottie touch the blobs? She did. She was like, Dottie touched the blobs. Yeah, she did touch the blobs. Then she got drenched in mommy vomit. But it wasn't only people who seemed to be affected by these mysterious blobs. In fact, it was the animals who were hit the hardest. Oh. Many allegedly died as a result. Possums? So, Possums? Yeah, sure. Possums died? Well, you, it's hard to tell which ones oh. died and which ones were just playing possum. <laughs> <laughs> they probably died, though. I like possums a lot. I do, well, too. they're all dead. Many allegedly died as a result, with those who ingested the blobs reportedly having a green film spilling out of their mouths. Dottie Hearn's recently adopted kitten, who lived outside on her 12-acre farm, died. Another resident, Beverly Aww. Roberts, claimed that 12 of her friend's animals died soon after the blobs fell. And when she grabbed samples of the blobs herself, she said both a raven and a frog were lying dead nearby. The next day, Roberts herself became sick with vertigo and spent nearly a week in the hospital. You ever have frog legs? They're yes. really good. They're really good. They're like little chicken. Little chicken. Only I, when they're I'm fried. getting hungry just looking at that. Not a lot of meat on them, but God, they're so good. They I are. Mean, he is just lying there spread eagle waiting yeah. for you to come chew his ass up. But you probably would not want to eat him because he ate blobs. Blob kill him. You eat him, blob kill you. Yeah. Well, I think it probably kills small animal because animal's small. So it might kill me, but it may not kill you. I don't think it would kill you. You're big enough. You're a big guy. You're a big guy. <laughs> Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Go ahead and check that one out. <laughs> And then when we'll we get, come, okay. what is that, two that's hours, about ten two minutes? two and a half hours, ten, I think. Half. So we'll come back here and then you'll get that reference and you'll be like, dude, Chubby Rain and you're a big guy. <laughs> Donnie's daughter, Sunny, had also taken samples of the blobs. Oh, and because shit. of her mother's ongoing illness, the hospital's lab agreed to test them. And they reportedly contained some human white blood cells. Uh -huh. Though, they were unable to do further chemical analyses. The blobs? The blobs contained human, human white, white blood, blood cells. cells. Interesting. Very interesting. What is your initial thought? I mean... <sighs> okay, my initial thought. What if... What if someone died in like a lake or a pond or a puddle and that no one ever noticed it and they just kind of like blurped into the puddle and then the puddle evaporated into the cloud and now it's raining like human fat and water and rain and blood is that possible could that happen i don't know my initial thought is that maybe some sort of weather cell picked up like blobs of human well i was gonna say like waste material somewhere are you suggesting there's like a pile of human shit somewhere that i mean i don't know i'm sure there are plenty of places in this world that irresponsibly recycle things the appearance though i can't imagine that it would be consistently this small clear translucent and blobby that i would have to guess is like some sort of effect of like once it gets up there and it's in the atmosphere yeah. it's being carried it like sort of uh, almost like you put something in a blender. You so, know, it sort of all comes out in some similar case. Well, I have seen shit in a blender. Fat Bastard did that. And that was in Austin, Austin Powers. Powers and it looked very, very... The Spy very... Who Shagged Me, which is... So go ahead and watch about 90 Austin minutes, Powers. So... <laughs> Sonny then sent the samples off to the Washington State Department of a Ecology... <laughs> this is point to ignore any reference to watch a movie and just get through the show. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Ecology hazardous material unit. I'm loving which it. Which found a number of cells of various sizes from creatures unknown, though they confirmed the cells lacked a nuclei and thus were not white blood cells. The hazardous material unit was unequipped to identify biological cells. So they passed the case on to their colleagues at Washington State Department of Health for further analysis. Okay. The Department of Health's findings also didn't discover the presence of white blood cells, but they did find two different types of bacteria. Reportedly, 
Pseudomonas fluorescens, and Enterobacter cloacae. Pseudomonas fluorescens is fairly common and isn't typically harmful to humans, although at least one 2021 study linked it to pneumonia. E. cloacae, though also commonly found in nature, can cause infections in humans, including pneumonia as well. Additionally, both bacteria thrive so both of them can cause pneumonia, so more likely you get it, you won't get pneumonia. I've had walking pneumonia, I believe it's called, whenever I was younger. I think I was in middle school. I stayed dizzy. Like, it felt like the floor was coming up at me a lot. <laughs> I know, like, you'd be saying, it's like, whoa. Maybe... I don't know, bro. This is weird. It's a blob that has this, has that, has that. And every time someone tests it or looks at it, it's different. I don't know. I don't trust none of it. I trust none of it. Thrive in moist environments, which the Pacific Northwest definitely is. Right. Health Department microbiologist Mike McDowell described his observations of the blobs. Quote, it was very uniformed. There was no structure we could see visibly or with a microscope. And okay. About a year later, the blob mm -hmm. samples were tested a fourth time by AmTest Laboratories. Tim Davis, the microbiologist who tested the samples there, said, quote, I saw what I think was a eukaryotic cell, which is basically a cell that has a definable nucleus and is found present in most animals, end quote. This opposes the nuclei finding from the Washington State Department of Health. The town just like, did they clean them up? Did they... Get I'm sure they did. Away. They probably got their hose out and like, all right, let's fucking hose away the blobs. Yeah. Because we don't want Dottie to get sick again. Well, that makes me concerned for the, um, like the ground soil and all that. But I guess everybody's fine now, right? Or maybe <gasps> such a small town, aliens were like, let's test out our new blob weapon on this small You're little getting area. ahead of yourself. Maybe. But they wouldn't say it like that. They'd say, There you go. <laughs> Is that them shooting blobs? Uh, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> well, that's them saying that we should do the blob weapon. Oh, that's not I what see. it would actually sound like. Yeah. That would sound like this. Yeah. Different. Yeah, right. Put them back to back. Very good. Now that we have all the information, it's oh, board, board time. Board, Let's yes. get into the theories. Let's Cork do it. Cork board time. Cork board time. Cork board time. Theory one, the blobs are actually jellyfish shredded up by the U.S. Air Force. The first theory is one that was widely believed at the time of the incidents, that the blobs were actually jellyfish somehow sucked up into the air from the nearby Pacific Ocean and shredded into tiny bits by U.S. Air Force jets during a bombing practice. The Air Force confirmed that such a bombing practice had taken place 50 miles away in the Pacific, both the week of the first Bob incident and the week before. Master Sergeant Thaddeus Hostley, spokesman at McCord Air Force Base in nearby Tacoma, said the 354th Fighter Squadron had dropped bombs about 10 to 20 miles west of ocean shores the previous week. I was about to ask any confirmation on those bombings, so yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. He said, quote, I they mean, were conducting yeah. bombing runs using live ordinance, end quote. But when Oakville Chief of Police Gary Groib said somebody suggested a school of jellyfish might have been blown literally sky high by the bomb test, McCord's spokesman tried and failed to stifle his laughter, saying he couldn't comment on the theory. I guess they sort of operate with that sort of impunity. They can just be like, well, we don't have to tell you anything. Well, I think it was more just like, that's ridiculous. Is it? Yeah, I think and it's is ridiculous. It? I actually... You I, would I also be able to tell it was a jellyfish by the labs that it was sent to. I guess, though I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you would? Yeah, it's a fucking jelly. Like, if you, if I blew you up... Yeah, I guess I they'd see little... Shane, yeah, they'd see little pieces of me. Pieces of me. Even if it was just like a nipple. I could send that to the lab. They'd be like, hey, whose nipple is this? And they'd be like, Bruh, 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 Shane Bidet. That's Shane's nipple. That's Shane's nipple. His left yeah. one, in fact. Yeah. Because it's bigger than his right. My nipples are identical. Well, good for you. Not all of us are that lucky. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> one on the right's three times bigger. Three. <laughs> Theory two. The blobs are airplane toilet waste. Ooh. Why three? Kind of an alarming theory, no? Um... Next episode of Mystery Files, why one of Ryan's nipples are three times the size of the other one. Stay tuned. It's a, 
It's alarming. I feel like snuck a picture of Candy Crush in here. I know. I like that. It's. A, I assume it's illegal for them to dump waste. It should be. We can't Fucking. all be out there being like the Dave Matthews Band. That's true. Just I was just thinking about that incident. Why don't you tell the folks at home what happened? Well, in my fair city of Chicago, Illinois, the Dave Matthews Band was leaving town on their tour bus and traveling over one of their city's many bridges, and they uh, dumped all the toilet waste from their tour bus out on the bridge, which happened to be over the river, and all the shit uh, poured from their bus through the grates of the bridge onto a boat full of tourists who were on an architecture tour, covering them in the shit of one of America's great beloved songsters, Mr. Dave Matthews. It was a bowel boat. It was, it sure was. Sign reads in part, no one died that day, but many wish they had. <laughs> Another early theory was that the no one died that day. But I mean, I love that. That was a news thing. Oh, fuck! I wish I would have seen that. Oh my god! Bombs were airplane toilet waste dumped out of a commercial airplane. Gross. Reportedly, Sonny Barcliffe got in contact with the FAA and convinced them to investigate. A Federal Aviation Administration spokesman said of the blob phenomenon, "Quote: We don't know what it is or where it came from." It's a puzzle, end quote, and pointed out that if the blobs had been airplane waste, they would have been blue, not translucent. So, you know, because. Yeah, it's always blue. They must use some sort of chemicals in there. Yeah. Oh, I guess you're on a plane, so you don't want it to stink. So maybe the blue sort of pacifies that, that stink. Or they're secretly liquefying members of the Blue Man group on airplanes. Next week on Mystery Files. Theory week after. Three week after the blobs your nipples are next week are actually star jelly yeah what now what star jelly come on now you can't just say that ask tell me, me more right? ask me about more oh, tell you more i'll tell you please more. tell me more about star jelly another theory ties the oakville blobs back to a long and noble history of blobbage Star jelly is a term that dates back to the 17th century and a phenomenon that was first observed in the 14th century. It has also been referenced in both poetry and scientific writings throughout that time. One long running theory about star jelly is that it rains down during meteor showers, earning it its starry name, as well as the terms astral jelly and astromacin. Star jelly has been used in reference to a multitude of substances over the years, slime, molds, amphibians, algae, and even sodium polyacrylate, an absorbent polymer that's used in agriculture, cosmetics, and even diapers. There was a case in Bournemouth, England in 2012 where sodium polyacrylate was used to absorb stormwater and gelatinous blobs formed as a result. Is that what we used today for the fun? What did we use for the fun? That was chunky slime. That was chunky that slime. That was chunky slime produced by our very own Carter Webb. He produced that? Yes. He secreted it? Well, I don't know if he secreted it. I just know he produced he it. He produced it. How so he did it, Carter, I have no idea. Carter produces slime. Theory number four. The blobs <laughs> are a result of other undisclosed military activity. It's hard. It's far. I, I know I can't. I, nailed it. Though there's no concrete evidence to support this theory, some residents of Oakville believed there might have been even more classified military weapons testing going on that the military did not admit to. Sonny Barcliffe said, quote, Ooh, we had a significant I like this amount one. of military aircraft flying over the home prior to this happening, end quote. While her mother, Dottie Hearn, added, quote, every day almost, low-flying bombers, helicopters, all black in color. And we kind of thought maybe it came from them, end quote. Beverly maybe. Roberts speculated maybe. to Unsolved Mysteries that, quote, maybe we were a biological experiment of some kind, a small one maybe, just to get people a little sick to find out. Say an enemy did come over here with a biological bomb and dropped it, maybe just a test run to see what would happen, end quote. The government was keeping them sick. They, they, Damn. They don't tell you nothing. So it's, right. it's highly possible it is them and they're up to no good. Would they, I believe that. Would they hurt their own people? Would they make people sick? Well, they regularly yeah. kill people all the way around, uh, you know, all around the world. That's so, true. So sure. Ever heard of a drone? Drone strikes. Press a button. Mr. Obama, he sure loved those. Just out there fucking. Yeah, I'll say it. Deleting villages. Bad, shame. We say no, no, a wag of the finger to drone strikes. I would get rid of drones. Theory five. The blobs 
our unfertilized amphibian spawn. I like the sound of that. Ah! It's fucking gross. Another recent incident happened in 2013 in Somerset, England, which is right there. Mm, Doesn't it look pretty? Stunning. It is beautiful. Pretty? That's about two hours away from the previously mentioned 2012 occurrence at a bird sanctuary nature preserve. Look at that bird. Tweet, 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 tweet and not. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever fucking birds say. The slime was much bigger than Oakville's Pretty blobs, good. about four inches in diameter. Oh, I'd love to get my hands on that. Oh, I'm sure you would. I would. You wouldn't like to get your- You wanna get your hands in a nice chody blob? A nice four inch blob. Four inch diameter? Well, I just, I a find- cheese wheel. You know, I understand the, the slime craze because slime feels very nice. I hate know? slime. I hate things that are What about a stress hands. ball? I just don't like gross things in my hands. Early theories were that the substance Fair was enough. no stock. A form That's of why you didn't want to put the slime in your hand at the beginning of the episode. It wasn't <laughs> even that you didn't trust me. You're just a baby. Guilty. Oh, <laughs> you nasty little boy. <laughs> uh, early theories were that the substance was no stock, a form of cyanobacteria. However, Star Jelly fans pointed out that there was a meteor sighting the week before. Upon further investigation, it was agreed that the slime was actually unfertilized amphibian spawn which contains a glycoprotein that creates a gelatinous substance when it comes in contact with water. Could this have also been the case with the Oakville blobs? Was it? Which brings us to our sixth theory. Well, no, I'm not done. I find frog eggs and tadpoles to be really disgusting. Thank God. That's what do you think about tadpoles? Thought you were going to say something else? You thought I was going to say sexy, arousing? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's out of character? Tadpoles, the way that they He's start out as like little fishy like things and then slowly just grow legs. I mean, we kind of look like tadpoles when we're sperm. This should be illegal. Anyways, let's go on to uh, theory number. Oh, they didn't put the theory. Well, theory number six is, of course. Aliens. It yeah. was aliens. Uh, what do you think it was, though, out of these? Um, I guess I'll go with. I'll go with number four. Number because four. number four is just like, the theory is it's basically yeah. a mystery. <laughs> That's true. right. It's like I mean, the military will never tell us what they were up to. Exactly. I think it's like that or or something out of like my earlier hypothesis, which was maybe some sort of biological waste that got picked up by a storm cell of so some So number kind. one then? Uh, similar to one, but maybe not necessarily jellyfish. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. 30 years have passed and all samples of the Oakville blobs are unfortunately long gone with nothing left to test with today's scientific advancements. Reportedly, even the Washington State Department of Health no longer has any record of receiving the blobs. So, unless the blobs strike again, the curious case of the Oakville blobs and the illnesses they reportedly caused will remain a mystery. <laughs> it's... A mystery. Well, I love a mystery. I love that. And I love not knowing. Isn't it nice that there's some things in this world that we'll never know? Yeah, and don't we have nice. to be at peace with that? We've had such yeah. a good time in the basement. We watched so many movies. Yeah. We uh, poured blobs on each other. Yeah, we did. And then we looked at pictures of blobs. I mean, that's great. It doesn't get much better than this. I'm having a great time so far this season down here in the basement. We're having a lot of fun. Me too. You know, we have three episodes left. Let's just make the most of the time that we can. That's all also, you can my do. wife's gonna kick us out of this basement sooner yep. rather than later. So we'll see you guys next time on Mystery Files. Why don't you just stick to the science? How about that? Why don't you just stick that little pointer up your ass? Oh, I might. I want to do it right now. Ah! <laughs> I love Walter. Like they are amazing. Man, I love learning all this shit. I didn't know a damn thing about the blobs, bruh. Man, what do you all think there was? Matter of fact, don't tell me because you guys have some fucked up imaginations like I do and I've already been to like God jizz. So. <laughs> Alright, I really enjoyed this video. If y'all enjoyed this video as much as I did, please go down there and leave a thumbs up. While you're down there going over, slap that subscribe button, become part of the Bill for Thousand Nation. We do some crazy shit here, and if you want to know when that crazy shit happens, ding that bell. It might work for you, it might not, but if it do, if it do, 
jump in on one of my premieres, go over in the live chat and be like, what's up, bro? It dinged. It dinged like so good. Leave a like and dip. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Damn. It's a good video. I really like this one. It was damn.